This is the Authority Partners Podcast. Uh, welcome everybody to the Authority Partners Podcast. As we agreed last time, this time I will be your host, Lina Mogic. And today I'm talking with my good friend and QA expert, Adam Mikhanovic. We're going to hash it out on how to properly implement automation and start with DevOps on legacy programs. Adnan, welcome, first of all. And right off the bat, I want to ask you, is there even a proper way to start with this? Thank you for listening to the podcast and thank you for the invitation on the podcast. Is there a right way? Definitely, there is no one way. That there is multiple ways. But since in you know, the 40 partners, we had the opportunity to work with many enterprise systems and uh, yeah. also leg- legacy applications. I believe there's a way that actually could bring success in implementing DevOps and automation and CI, CD, basically, on e- even on the legacy programs. It is challenging, at least it's doable. And there are some mistakes that even we made in the past because we did a perspective of what we, where we failed basically. Now we actually managed to create, uh, let's, let's call it process, uh, how actually to do it more structurally in order actually to have better results in the end. But like, let's imagine some legacy system doesn't have any automation, no CI, CV. My question would really be where to start it to be like, when would you like start doing that? First of all, what I like to do is to see what we have. Maybe the system doesn't have automation or doesn't have even unit test cases or, or doesn't have anything. Let's say they were just uh, doing old fashioned way. They had two teams, one team is developers, the other team is QA. Basically, they were throwing that done job to the QA. And like QA would do some type of test cases, I wouldn't even, uh, I mean, I would review what type of test plans they have, even if they have. So I would like to know where we are. That's the first thing. Second thing is what I always try to understand is what is the team structure? In order to this to be successful, I really believe in those functional things. So one of the things we first discuss is how we actually set up our teams as number one. The second thing we discussed is basically our SDLC because if we want to have this principle, we have to actually incorporate automation, unit testing implementation, integration test implementation inside our SDLC. It cannot be something that we will do later. So basically what we do, we see we create a teams that have multiple specialties. So in one inside one team, you have all necessary specialties in order to deliver the item. We define what are the deliverables, where actually each item has deliverables, like a functional requirements code, like a test strategy, test plan, test cases, automated test cases, unit integration is also part of it. One of the main first thing we introduce in that case is RTM, a requirement stability matrix, where we map all the requirements. And then we even as a team, because we have multiple specialties there, we actually consider what type of test cases are needed. If you only let it to QA, let's say you had a manual QA, like they'll always focus on UI. But if you all, all remember, like QA, Tiram is always saying you should focus on lower level testing, like unit integration, contracts, like UI for us in this case is if must, like only if it's really necessary, we will actually go towards the UI test cases. But this is something, RTM is something that's helping us to define this. So we define the RTM, we part of the grooming session, basically we add the new requirement that we got. And this is like from day one, we are immediately setting up the pipeline. Like even if it has nothing, we are setting up the pipeline that's executing the test plans. Because for each release, let's say, well, the first things we do is we set the pipeline that is going to be used from now on. Then we set inside the pipeline the task, uh, Azure DevOps task, for example, run functional test cases, where we use test plan uh to, from where he's going to pull the test cases, even as we do today. And basically, from the day one, when we start with a new process that we define that we're implement part of the implementation in UI test case in test integration, it's immediately getting executed and reported. Uh, one of the main challenges here is when you start with this initiative, you have a lot of gaps, like in testing. You miss a lot of unit test cases. You miss a lot of regression test cases, uh, integration test cases. And one of the main mistakes was that we were always trying to, to solve the past. Let's first automate small test cases. But actually, that usually was uh, set to fail because you were, uh, you were trying to automate something that was in the past, but your current uh, lo- load is not getting automated. 
And actually, your automation was never, uh, your automation was always at least cut and build minus one. So you could never actually use it for any verification. That's why we said, like, okay, this is day one for us. We don't care what happened in the past. This is how we do it in authority partners. So part of the implementation is unit test, integration test, let's call it regression test cases. And in the beginning, that task, regression test cases, is going to be huge, bro. Because you have to automate everything that's not basically there in the past automated. Plus, you have to actually deliver the item in a certain amount of time. That's why, like, there are two ways how you can do it. First of all, you can increase the check capacity per team. So your, the ratio is not going to be one to three that they are usually using. And or the second thing that we actually like more, you are going to uh, put account with the whole team to deliver these items. So what it means, basically, uh, you will have, regardless of the specialty, you will have team that's taking any task under the item and basically delivering it as part of the code implementation, where you will have even that specialist actually automating some of the test cases, creating some of the test cases. Because later on, because it takes time actually to do this, later on, actually, they will see benefits. All of them are going to see benefits out of it. And that's uh, maybe the biggest challenge is uh, to, how to say it properly, actually to implement this culture. Because let's say they were doing job uh, like certain way for many years. Now we are saying to everyone, even developers and QA, now you have to do it like this. That's why basically we always explain why, what's our goal in the next six months, in the next one year, because we want to iterate it. And then we are also reviewing where we are. In order to have client on board to this, it's very important to track how successful we are or are we successful at all. That's why basically what we were usually doing is, uh, let's say we have regression test plan. We give the estimate how much time we need to execute some certain regression test plan manually. But because we invested time in automation, how, how much time we invested versus plus how much time uh, we need for the regression now, we compare with how much time we would need if there was no automation. And we are actually calculating that from day one. So in time, the number for regression is going to go down because in time you are going to cover enough integrations, you are going to cover enough, you are going to create enough UI pages, regression test cases that some of them will be reused because you will not implement always the new test case or use the existing test case or at least some steps from the existing test case. And actually the client is going to see the benefits of actually investing in automation, but it's not from day one, it's actually after six months, nine months, one year. But it's very important to stay consistent in all of that. Uh, definitely, definitely agree there. But one question I want to ask you is, so if we're working with a legacy system that uh, has to add like automation later, uh, generally what I found, for example, is that uh, the architecture of the system tends to make testing, especially automation testing, uh, more difficult. Uh, like, how would you deal with that, like, pushback to, like, change parts of the system architecture to enable automation? Because I think just to be able to do some testing, sometimes you need some, like, service hooks in the app, like, not to use the uh, UI, etc. Like, very often we heard, like, application is not even testable, right? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, I mean, like, I don't know how it works then if you can't test it, right? I mean, if, like, yes, that's true. But, uh, if application is not unit testable, that means it really needs refactoring, right? Mm -hmm. Like lit literally, you will start with refactoring of the code because that means the code is badly made, it's not decoupled, like there are issues with that texture. So basically, by implementing the unit test cases as mandatory for the beginning, you are adding enough additional work for sure, but you have to explain to the client the benefit out of it. And you are actually going to start delivering the code that's more proper that follows the standards, patterns. Because usually if it's not unit testable, it didn't follow any pattern, basically. It's, it's like spaghetti code, how we like to say it. it has too many dependencies. But basically, even that, implementing unit tests on a so-called not unit testable code is good for the client in the end. But again, in the long run. And yes, there are many challenges of implementing all of this to legacy systems. But that's why, like, we have to make a call here. Are we going, do we want to be better in a year or we want to push as they are pushing now the code and just make, and just uh, how to say hope we will actually deliver everything with 100% quality. Like it, it, it's decision that had to be made, has to be made 
it's a hard decision because also to refactor things it's very hard, let's be honest. Because you will touch something, you can always you can always break something new and like people will rather say let's start from scratch. But in many occasions it's not possible. But still, like you should always you should always check which part of the code we use the most. Because you always have like 80% of the code is used 20% of the time. Or 80% of the time, it's only 20% of the code used. You can focus on, on that part of the code. Same so goes with functionalities. You, as a I know, program lead, you should know what are the key features. You can immediately add them to RTL. You can see, or you can map the code with those as well and see, okay, let's please unit test first this part as well. So what we usually did, like in these cases, we would set in the policy for the new code, unit test coverage has to be 80 plus percent, only for the new code. So whenever the people touch the code, they have other unit test cases, and in time it would grow. It would it would take a lot of time to get the overall code to be 80 percent, but we would always focus to start from the parts that are the most important part of the application, and plus the ones that are currently developed. But I mean, it's always what do you get in the end, in the long run. You never focus on what will you lose today. It's what you will gain in a year, basically. That would be, so that would be like a part of your like sales pitch to the client to uh, to try and like push this in, right? Uh, that would be the thing I would explain to the client because we in our partners we believe in quality. If we want to achieve the quality, there are certain things we need to implement in certain ways that we actually tested a lot. Like we have many years in IT business and we also failed uh, like a few times, but from those failures we actually learned a lot. And that's why we actually implemented these processes that we defined. The processes, basically, we did retrospective, we iterate our processes. Even the ones that were successful, basically, we also challenged how they can be better. And that's why now we came now to this solution, which doesn't mean in uh, six months, one year, we will not come up with another solution. Because we are always striving to be better, more efficient, faster, and always deliver the higher quality. Even on the legacy systems, because we... We don't want to reject legacy systems. They are working, they are fine, but we can actually update them to be up to AP standards, let's call it like that. Yeah, I agree. But the thing about legacy systems is you know, their legacy. If they weren't working, they would be I mean, discarded and recoded by them. But if the client has got like a stable legacy system, that really hasn't been tested much. Yeah, I think would it be like a harder sell? Uh, that's true. It depends basically how much the system wants to be changed. And rarely you have systems that are not changing, basically, right? Like, mm-hmm. uh, re- like, but because everybody wants to implement new cool things, update something on the system that actually affects the whole system until you test it, you need like about 15 days to test everything. And it, it still you are not sure basically is it going to be, uh, okay in the end. That's why we always, we always recommend the approach. Let's first implement like a proper way of doing things, like uh, let's start with increasing the new test cases, generation test cases. And here we're only talking about real automation, but there is much more than that. There's also performance stress, non-functional testing. Like we need those in order to be able to make any radical change in the system. There are systems that are working for many years successfully, but I, I didn't still see the system that's not changing. And those, when implementing those changes, basically, it, it's very hard if you don't have set, like if you if you don't have correct setup of uh, how you are delivering uh, the software, basically the new features to that system. Understood, understood. Uh, one question I want to ask you is like, uh, you mentioned building a culture of testing. Now, yes, we can do a part of that by implementing policies, but uh, how do you actually get to the actual people who are supposed to form that culture? How do you, how do you like change their mindset? On culture is maybe the biggest challenge. I mean, in my opinion, everybody know every company has uh, people that they know to code, right? And uh, they can write cool, cool automation, unit tests, integration tests, but actually culture is a key thing. Uh, and there are two things there. There's a culture and there is actually like uh, uh, enforcing the culture. We are always trying to basically uh, explain to everyone why we are doing certain things. Because if you enforce it, uh, like it's, there are I mean, tools uh, and there are actually policies we have that how we can actually even enforce it. That's why we have like reviews and everything else. And, but basically the most important part actually in better ways is actually to 
explain to the people where we will be, explain why we are not doing all of this, explain the key pyramids to everyone of the program, track and report. And that's why, like, I know this will sound funny, that's why for me, like, sprint goal and sprint achievements are very important. If you are, like, in this generation of people, they really like short wins, right? And mm-hmm. if you basically report often to these people, hey, guys, we achieved this. This is our achievement in these two weeks. We achieved that. That's why I really love to receive the email sprint achievement. Because we win something. We finish something. When, because work, work on the, on the applications, it's constant. Like, there's no end. Like, hopefully there's no end. Basically, there is always something new to do. And if you don't send these sprint achievements, it's kind of, you didn't do still anything. You, you can feel really demotivated. But if you report back, like, hey guys, in three, in last, in previous three months, we managed to, I don't know, cover this much of RTL RT requirements and this many test cases we automated. We lowered down the regression from two unit test coverages. This, like, people will feel they achieved something. Even the ones that, that, let's say, they didn't maybe accept fully the culture, they are actually, let's say, enforced to do certain, uh, by certain process, actually, they will get there as well. But most important, actually, is in the beginning is to have the approach to people to try to explain them why we are changing this, what is the end goal, the, the, the famous book starts with why, and then basically report uh, often to the people so they can actually feel they are achieving something with that. And that is a great summary. Man. Yeah, and it's something that we have to religiously stick to because uh, there is a thing that we forget to do because, okay, we achieve, it's expected from us. No, we need to embrace, we need to show the people we are achieving things because they will keep pushing and even harder. And this is something that's kind of missing in IT. Yes, it's our job to do all of this, but also we should celebrate these small successes because everything should be iterated, basically. Any implementation should be iterated and each iteration should be celebrated. So basically creating a few positive reinforcement loop. Uh, it can be negative as well, right? Like well, we yes. can say <laughs> I mean negative. I mean, it can be a feedback, basically, like, okay, guys, three months passed, our percentage is two percent what's happening. Let's again review it together. Let's see where we are failing, and let's start again. Like, it, 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 it doesn't go always easy, let's say it like that. But it's all normal. Like, if we are still trying to achieve it, like, that's the most important part. But still, there will always be some gaps we have to pick up. We have to review them. We have to uh, challenge them. To solve them, basically. In the, end. in the end, our job is actually to challenge what we are doing and make it more efficient and better. But basically, you could also apply the same system to, like, you not know, just a legacy system with, like, no testing. You can also apply it to, like, a system with bad testing as well. Definitely. Like, I mean, in the end, you can apply it anyway, basically. Like, uh, even if you, even let's say people have everything. Like, I, I saw many, I saw programs like people have automation, but it's, uh, I don't know, separ- the t- separate the team, uh, but they have automation. You, you, you cannot say it's not there, but sometimes the things they are doing are still not uh, breaking the quality. I saw like programs that are doing automation just to do automation. It's kind of thing to do. That's why um, I like to put everything on the team. It's team delivery, team responsibility, team delivery, and team achievement. And you should also challenge those. Like even if you are succeeding, let's say, you, like, it's also good to do the retrospect to see how we can be even better. Like, because there is always things to improve. Like, I always loved, uh, when, uh, m- my colleagues basically would challenge other ideas because with these discussions, actually, we would come up with even better idea. Like, it's much better than 10, 10 people think and argue and discuss things. Like, the thing that will come up is probably always better. And sometimes we will say, which is normal, like, okay, let's say this. This is not good here. Maybe it takes too much time to refactor the code, but we will check it. We'll try to check it. See, like iterate the process, see, it, and maybe decide. Maybe it's not the third thing. Maybe we'll really decide to try only with integration. Or we'll just to try decide actually to focus on UI because it really takes too much time. It depends from program to program. But the important thing is to have end goal, what we want to achieve, and then yeah, to uh, achieve efficiency and quality, which is the most important for us. Great point. And I really like the thing that you said about making uh, quality something that the entire team is responsible for. So that they, I guess, uh, feel a lot more ownership of uh, the system and the project. 
I think it really goes into the part that you mentioned about uh, building this culture. Definitely. Like, uh, there was a like, time, I know, it was 10 years ago, like, we had something like that complete, this complete, that complete, but in the end, actually, it's completed or not completed. And there, and basically, that's the, let's say, winning point when you're explaining to teams. There is implementation started and completed. Because when it's completed, client has it. These between tasks we are having are, let's say, useless. You all have to work together in order to deliver the quality software from QA specialist, dev specialist, devil specialist, like there is everyone included in the whole process. And then in the end, actually, clients has been out of it. And when you put this in front of the people, basically, they actually start thinking and they actually start working. But it actually needs a lot of discussions, the discussions mostly, but basically in the end, it's worse mine. Definitely, definitely do more work today so that you will have to do less work in a year and a half with like month-long regressions or something. Which is a winning point. Like, hey guys, you will have a feedback in 10 minutes versus hey guys, we'll have feedbacks in five days. Like yeah. you will have a happy client or not that happy client. I mean, uh, and the good thing is like, in AP, we all want to uh, like deliver the quality. We all need to deliver the quality. So... There, there are basically points that are even easy to sell. Uh, I'm not, sure, I'm not um, saying it's easy to implement. There is uh, sometimes challenges with implementation. But the good thing is we have systems how we are following it and making sure actually it does implement in the end. It doesn't go always smoothly, but the important thing is we are always willing to work to actually always improve. Uh, so I really agree with you with that. So that is the important thing that we're always willing to work and actually always improve the quality. And I completely agree that that is the entire point of the quality assurance process and uh, giving this ownership to the team uh, to create the best product that we can, right? We, as engineers, we always like to improve things, improve ourselves, and we should always basically work on improving ourselves, improving our programs, even our colleagues, our teams. So that's it. That's what IT stands for, basically. Let's improve things, make them more efficient, and actually make sure they actually work properly. Completely agree, man. Anyway, uh, thank you for being our guest today. And uh, yeah, thank you for putting me in the role of the host. So I hope uh, next time we'll be able to grab a bunch more people into this and yeah, maybe make it an hour long podcast. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much. Thank you, AP Podcast. And definitely looking forward to collaborate more with AP Podcast and even with all other members of AP and of Vider. Likewise, man. Likewise. Great experience. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. This is the Authority Partners Podcast.